Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Bob Does Sports Podcast. Um, no Binyamin today. No big ticket today. Nicky Juice behind the lens yeah. today. Getting his debut. Not many know. You will know Nicky Juice, who's going to be joining us. Nicky Juice set up this studio, and he fucking crushed it. I don't know, Juice, if we could show a panoram around of, of the studio, if that's possible. But um, Juice really, I mean, he went all out on this. I always wanted to do it. You know, when everybody comes in, the only problem about doing the studio is then Perez lost a bed when he when he comes in. So Perez has been on the couch. <laughs> yeah, for, for quite well, I was a really day. selling the uh, the two bedroom <laughs> new apartment. I was. Um, but this is this is worth it. You know. Yeah, I was. A, I'm always. I'm a couch guy. Let's be honest. When my mom like was helping me set up, she kept saying like, you know, what about Perez for the second room? And Conte Plo was just kind of like. You know, with all due respect, fuck Perez. Like, yeah, I, no, I can't, uh, that's fair. Yeah, I can't like base it yeah. around off one every Correct. three months. I don't. I'm not, I'm not paying rent. No, I'm no. not paying rent. I don't. Mm. I don't well, deserve room. Well, FP is a team player for staying here. He uh, is. He should be, you know, pinned up in a nice, luxurious well, hotel. Uh, correct well, me if a, a day's end would be fine. I'd... Correct. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, though. I think that Perez enjoys being in the mix, and like I almost think that in a way, like yeah, you'd rather have a bed. But when push comes to shove, you like being in the mix. Sure, I mean, I def- I think that's why we get Airbnbs now, and we don't do hotel rooms like we yeah. did before. It's just because it's like, like when do you draw the line where I'm like, all right, I'm gonna head to the hotel, and it's like night's over, and you know, then you're just there with your thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like that. I don't, I don't have a lot of good stuff going on up here, and. I need I need company. I need company. You're but you know what? You're a company guy too. We yeah. all I think we all are yeah. to some extent. Well, the only thing for me is I always go to bed earlier to where when we do the Airbnbs, I always try and get away from the living room, especially with with, with your laugh. Like it's fair. Like, you can hear that through it's anything fair. to where like I try and get that my favorite thing we have going right now is when we are staying at those Airbnbs. It is so much fucking fun. The golf is fun, all of that's a blast. I love staying at the Airbnb because the vibes are just out of this world. Yeah, Yaman was talking about bringing Nikki Juice to Canada so he could film Juice get the behind the scenes. Yeah, that's bad. Nikki cocktails. Yeah, yeah, Nikki, Nikki cocktails. cocktails. We're working. We're working out your nickname, Nikki Juice. We're because we have <laughs> it out. we have a few Nikki Juices. Um, we're working on that, but the Canada trip is up and coming. I am. Very much looking forward to it. We are going to get into the U.S. Open talk because that's what we're doing here. A um, little bit of the postgame, co- uh, what we think, you know, kind of what we saw. We watched it all together. That Canada trip is going to be spectacular, Joey D. Coming in July. And then um, tomorrow, looks like it's going to go through. Paige Sporanic we're going to be filming with tomorrow, which should be a blast. Yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. She's 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 been here forever, dude. Yeah. Like, she's... She's killing the the um, the game as far as golf Instagram influencing and stuff. It'll be cool to get her out on the golf course and and on our channel. Obviously, yeah, she's a player. I saw her hit um, when we were in Tahoe, Joe. Yeah, last year. And again, I haven't said I'm very sick, so my voice <laughs> is messed up. But um, we saw her in Tahoe, um, and I I was walking around and I saw her hit, play like a hole and a half. And she's good, man. She's got games. She played in college, like. She's a good golfer. I don't know how much college? like much she's playing now, but it, um, she's a player. She seems to, just from what I've gathered just talking to her, is like she seems very – I think she's going to get the flow. She seems like she's got a really good personality. I'm sure. And she she seems she pretty She'll quick. get it quickly. Yeah, to where I'm looking forward to that. I think that's going to be a very fun time. Better bring her A-game because Perez has been bringing the action the last – This guy's week. playing out of his mind. Yeah, the Jordan flu game last week, it was pretty, pretty special to watch. Guy yeah. could barely talk, and he was slinging darts. Perez – Perez has been sick as a dog. Um, he really has. I feel for the guy because we were we went to the U.S. Open. If he doesn't like, you know that he wants to go. He's been so sick. But we. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's true. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's been hurt, and then we played with the the Busta Jack guys the other day. You probably forced it. You probably should have taken another day off. But he I'm comes out, he and oh my God, it just the guy's getting better. And I'll tell you, he's not me and you. That's that's another. You made dialogue. a couple of good shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, ca- I came out here because we we're gonna for we we're gonna film with um, Barstool Foreplay, and then we we're gonna link up with Buster Jack and do some stuff with them, and then we were gonna go to the U.S. Open for one or two days, and I was so I still am messed up, but I was so bad off, um, pretty much right after I landed here, it got really bad, 
and we had to bail on Barstool. Yeah. I feel terrible about, but yeah. I mean, dude, yeah, I, nothing you could do. I couldn't move. I was, I think I was on your couch for 21 hours 21 straight. 21 straight hours. 21 yeah. hours straight, I didn't <laughs> leave his couch. Legitimate. More than he slept um, for a week. Oh, it was and, bad. <laughs> and then, you know, I started to sort of feel better. And then it was like, all right, I don't like, we need videos. And, you know, so I went out to do Busted Jack. And yeah, I, I paid the price for that. Probably set me back another day. Yeah, it, it might have. Um, so then I can go to, couldn't go to the U.S. Open the last um, Friday or Saturday. So you didn't miss it much. Sucks. Well, I, I would, you know, I wanted to get out there. <laughs> Tell you um, what, that will that that's will tough, that will lead us. I'm yeah, not, we'll get right I'm into not, it. No, no let's let's do it. <laughs> it was terrible. We just finished attitude. watching, by the way. We. The U.S. Yes. Open finished about 30 yes. minutes ago. It was ago. good to watch on TV, but being yeah. there, I'm going to tell you right now, the course is immaculate. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely stunningly beautiful. But as far as trying to watch a putt or watch as a spectator, if you're not in one of those boxes, which I was not, it is tough sledding because, like, for example, on the 15th uh, hole, that 81-yard hole, we were trying to watch the putts, and it's, like, elevated. You can't see where the putt's going. And I'm like... He could have put that in or he could have missed. I would not know. Um, and it just seemed like the vibe was just not ideal. Um, way less people than what we've experienced in recent tournaments. We were at Brookline last year at, you know, at the U.S. Open at the Brookline Country that Club. Was that crazy. was a, And even that vibe was a little bit different than what I've been used to, but it was way better. Um, I just, I don't know. I think it's a classic case of LACC is just, uh, you know, they have members buying tickets from what I hear. Who knows? Mm. But um, good golf, just not uh, the best place to watch it. Press your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I didn't go, so I, I don't, I don't have a good uh, a pulse on the um, atmosphere out there. Um, I will always defend great golf clubs, um, and you know, I think when you when you compare it to like Boston last year, I think the Boston sports crowd is a more raucous crowd in general sure so i think you know it's a bigger place there's probably more tickets and that that crowd is already going to be a little bit more raucous and boozy and whatever it may be so you know i I think la la is a tough place to get around right i think it's not as you know even though it's in the heart of of like west hollywood and beverly hills i imagine it's it's not it's it's not a place people are going to get banged up and raucous the same way mm-hmm. they would at some of these other cities. I think, you know, you go to some of these markets like Rochester where they just had the PGA, and when the PGA comes to town, that's what is going on. You know, it's like a Bills game in Buffalo. Nothing else is going on in that city that day. I think L.A. just in general, there's always something going on in L.A. So even when the U.S. Open's here, it's not like the city shuts down for the U.S. Open. So, you know, Give or take, you know, take what you want out of that. I mean, again, I'm, I'm that's sort of speculating, but I've never really heard that like Lakers or Clippers games are exactly the most raucous atmospheres in the NBA. I haven't necessarily heard Kings games are un, like unbelievably crazy as far as NHL goes. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the LA sports they, crowd is. Very like. corporate. They it was it it really was. They they capped the amount of tickets that they gave out, and it was more of just like it was definitely a more subtle. Um, crowd it, it it wasn't the normal from what we've seen from other tournaments even if we go to riv like riv is still more of like a rowdy yeah. it was definitely a lot more tame and it, you know the thing with going to the golf tournaments and i do love going to the golf tournaments i love it more from an atmosphere standpoint like being with people who sure. love golf and drinking and like that's a fun thing but as far as watching golf and not just lacc i think it's kind of anywhere it's like when, if you're looking at it, honestly, you really don't get to see that much golf. You pick and choose who you're going to see, and then you have people in front of you for the big groups where you're kind of like peeking over to where you don't really get to see that to where like the Sundays, I like to watch it from home for sure. But um, yeah, I just like being in the, the environment and the atmosphere. This definitely was a lot more tame, and LACC is known for being... Um, just a, I don't want to say stuffy's not the word, but just tighter. Just, They're yeah. stricter. No, yeah. it's, it's very old school. And I wonder how much of that reputation is sitting with people going, even from L.A. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they know that it's a, a place they're normally not going to be. And whether that, knowing that sort of just keeps everybody inherently a little bit more on their, you know, P's and Q's than... So it might be a little bit subconscious. I, I think like Boston, for example, it's a great example. Boston, 
they don't give a shit where they're going. They're going there for a good time. They, like Brookline is a very nice old school place. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Once the Boston, you know, population rolls into somewhere, they're gonna have a good time. They don't, you know, it could be, it could be a Catholic well, church. You know, it doesn't like matter. Tory Pines that that looked pretty freaking amazing. Yeah, well. and so but Tory's, you know, it's a public golf course. Yeah. So I mean, it's. The thing that I think it's just like kind Masters, of, right? Yeah. Ma- Masters has that air about it. People go to the Masters; they know how they're supposed to act at Augusta. But the, the Masters, Masters isn't necessarily like I've never been. So Bob, maybe I don't know if you've been pressed. I've never been, so maybe you could answer. Not. Bob. They didn't allow access to the first tee box because it was next to the clubhouse. LACC. Yes. Yeah, so in order to go to the first tee box, you needed clubhouse access, and I think it's just like right out of the gates, it sets a tough. Like, it's not a huge atmosphere. Like, I'm used to, like, them announcing the golfers, you know, right out of the gate. First tee box, vibes are high, high energy, high atmosphere. And it was just kind of like, man, like, people are, like, lined up on the fairway. There was just, I don't know. It was, to me, like, that set a bad precedent right out of the gate. But the place, like I said, was incredible. And just, like, walking it, I tried to walk majority of the course. A, I didn't realize how hilly that place is. It's unbelievably, like, up and down. And B, it's... It's immaculate. Like the, the the course and then the homes on the course are just like, if you didn't even want to watch the golf and just be there just for the beauty of just a gorgeous Saturday day in LA, walking that course was unbelievable. But yeah, it was not a bad vibe. It just didn't feel like a US Open. It's different. They, they I, it, I've never seen a course get that much different scrutiny for like just different things, different that, angles. Yeah, they took a they took a lot of heat, which was interesting. The atmosphere, and then you got golf. You know, some of the players talking about how they felt about the golf course, not loving it. Players and bashed it too. Yeah. So it's interesting. I think it has a very um, in the world of golf, it has a very um, great reputation. It's being a very you know very um, you know kind of a steward of the game on this coast. And um, it's it's a great golf course with a great remodel by Gil Hands. I mean, you hear, you know, about the bunkering all telecast, and I, I think it is quite a beautiful golf course. You know, sometimes, the, like, look, I mean, sometimes the pros, the pros play golf courses through a very different lens than your average member does or your average golfer does, right? So what a, a pro might consider to be a great golf course or a great test for them may not be something that feels that way if you and I go play yeah. and vice versa. The you know the great great venues, the great courses are the ones where everyone can agree that it's an awesome place. Um so maybe it is just a better, you know, like Brooks was saying, um maybe it is a better course just a casual members to you round. There's a it is uh, for those guys. There was the know. clip which was a tough look. There was a clip that got posted of uh Ricky Fowler hitting. I think it was on Saturday he hit like a 50 foot putt. And it is pretty bizarre. You didn't really hear any cheer. I mean, there was yeah. cheers, but it was nothing like you would expect. <laughs> it's just a different the whole club. It's a it's a different atmosphere. My um classic <laughs> story, <laughs> classic story with Big Wave Dave, uh, the caddy for Bo Hostler. Him and Bo were staying at a member's place from LACC, and I had gone to LACC a few weeks prior. I got to play with with a member and like. It is very tight, like, you know, me with the phones. I want to be doing content. Like, you can't have your phone out. Like, it's very tough. But anyway, they were playing Riv. They were playing Riv, and uh, they were staying at the, the member's house, this massive house, and they invited me to come over. So I come over for dinner. I had no idea that the guy was a member at LACC. We sit down. We're having dinner, and then we start talking about different golf courses in the area, this one, that one. And I don't know what got into me, but I started just going off about LACC about how like they don't allow any phones and it's very tight and it's not I don't know how they do this and the money you got to spend and I turned to the member I said have you ever played there and he points to his cup and he's drinking tequila and it says um I thought it was your cup didn't he uh, say look at your cup yeah yeah I had it and then he had it <laughs> yeah. too and it said LACC um club champion and Bo and, and Big Way and he took it really well, started cracking up, but I really went in on him and I, I don't I don't know really what got into me. <laughs> it it was it was a tough look in the end, yeah. Um but anyway, as far as play, we saw it today, and again, I know Bob to Sports, a lot of times we do just stuff about the trip. We wanted to kinda everybody was locked in, it seemed like this weekend. Um we had Rory. I had Rory. 
bet Rory pretty big. You hopped on on the Rory train. Wyndham Clark, he seems, you said that, he seems like a great guy. He seems like a good dude. I met him um, when, oh, I was, yeah. when I was out in Scottsdale for the, oh, yeah. the good, good championship. Who didn't you meet? Uh, um, <laughs> I, I'm a yes guy. Um, He's the mayor's I was uh, I was talking with, with Sleaze um, from Subpar Pod. And uh, he was hosting a party for Wyndham um, for um, his w- winning the Wells Fargo. It was like a, you know, winner, you know, welcome home uh, party. And, and I, uh, so he invited me and I, I actually played Greyhawk with Riggs that day, which is where the party was. And Riggs was invited too. So it was perfect. So we got a little boozy on the golf course and, and went to this party. So I had never met Wyndham before. So I'm meeting Wyndham for the first time at his congratulations party for winning which is like in my mind i'm like like yeah this is when i show up right i show up when the guy wins <laughs> and like hey nice to meet you bro yeah. like yeah so it's, it's not really so how it worked funny. out it was just i wasn't gonna you know it sounded like a good time so i went uh, but but meeting him um super good dude i met his brother i met some of his family they they're just awesome people um and they seem like the friends that they had really respect him um, and have been kind of singing his praises and his golf game for some time now. Um, so I think everybody around him kind of saw at least the Wells Fargo coming, um, and, and obviously the US, winning the U.S. Open. You could just tell how much it meant to that guy when, oh, when that yeah. last putt went in and, you know, losing his, his mother. Um, the, you know, there was a lot of stuff it seemed like, that emotions. He's just, he's just a normal dude. Like, we were yeah. just sort of hanging out like he'd hang out with anybody um so it's cool um it's cool to see people like that win um and have success just good down to earth good people that have been grinding and paying his dues I mean he's been on this tour for a long time with a lot of talent and um you know it it feels like um it feels like when Homa started to break through yeah you know what I mean it it has that same I mean obviously Homa didn't win a U.S. Open or hasn't won a major I'm sure you know he's knocking on the door but it just seemed like once Max kind of got it going yeah. and got that confidence with his first win, which was actually, I believe, the Wells Fargo too. So, might be something to that. But it's just he just seems to have the game, and and you see him on the back nine today in some of these situations where he's missing greens and he's got to get up and down, and and you know you got Rory McIlroy kind of nipping at your heels, and he was just stone cold out there. Yeah. Oh, he had some. Big time shots. He too. did. That yeah. little nipper he had too that he spoke. Oh yeah. yeah, on um on on that par three oh. like twelve or something I think. Oh, oh my when god. When he missed left, I mean that was a hard shot, and then he had he got up and down on a on another hole. When he was on, in the bush, seventeen or sixteen. Yeah. Um, oh was, yeah, yeah. When like, he you know when he missed yeah. left and you're like that's a tough. He's got up and up against the rough. I mean, he hit a lot of touchy chips and and a nervous back nine of the U.S. Open that sure to show, you, you know, you cannot be tentative at all with shots like that. So you could just tell he's just fucking balls to the wall, just still carrying confidence from that first win. And um, I think he just went I think he just went out there and was a dog, man. Give some kudos to his caddy, too, guy that we – Don Ellis, yeah. We went out for dinner. Bob and I, we went out for dinner with them on Wednesday night. I mean, I don't think anybody – not 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 to, to any, you know – not to say that they're not, you know, weren't in a position that they weren't good enough to win, but I just don't think anybody was thinking that he was going to win the U.S. Open. We went out to Rails and just the nicest guy ever, and it seemed like he was really there by Wyndham, like every hole. Like he was really talking him through everything. You know, I, I can imagine the pressure of trying to win a major for the first time. You're leading, and you know, you have a lot of. He, they they were one and one with everything going back and forth. He's this routine where it looks like he's about to putt and he backs himself off. Yeah. Then he talks to to John, and this is it's. I mean, it worked brilliantly that for them, and and we're we're super happy for John just knowing him outside of he got everything. His he got his tickets to yeah, that super video. good guy, and I just yeah, just unreal. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I mean, it's just like that was Wednesday. We were out for dinner with him. We went for him, Scotty Vale, Big Wave, and so to funny think that too. they won the U.S. I Open know. is. Unbelievable! It, at the dinner too, he I said to him, I was like, "Who do you?" I was like, "Obviously, besides Wyndham, like, who do you like?" <laughs> and he said, before it even started, he's like, "Rory." He's like, "The course plays to Rory." Um, he did say that. So I remember. And then to see them going against him was was it was really was. I mean, it was pretty nuts. Um, 
to see that. And then again, back to the Wyndham thing, it just feels like with these guys, like when you get one win under your belt, like you were saying, the Homa thing, it's so like pressure off. It's just like, yeah, it's got to take the weight of the world off your shoulders and you just play yeah. so much looser. Well, yeah, I think there's just a mindset when you get down to it that like the first time you did it, you're trying to convince yourself that you can. And then when you have, you can feel comfortable that you have. Like, it's just a different mindset of closing. You know, I, I've never been there. So, like, it, this is just being a golfer. But, like, I, your your first one's going to be your hardest one. And then when you start, you know, you it's just when you can think and put yourself into successful moments in your mind and headspace and, and call upon that, it just makes it a little bit easier to be confident out there. Um, and know that you can, you know, not that you think you can, you know that you can. I would even imagine from a financial standpoint, you win one tournament and you're pretty much set for the whole year. So you don't have to worry a, like yeah. a lot of these guys with expenses and your caddy sure. fees and this and that, like you win one, you're like, okay, now we're playing with house money. Yeah. I'm sure like what you said has a more of a factor in it, but I'm sure from a financial standpoint too, it's like, okay. Like, A, I did this, I'm I'm golden for the year, no matter what happens now. And you might bring a more of an element of just playing freely and not having to worry about, like, yeah. making a cut or this and that and being a little bit more aggressive, which might, you know, in, in, in a term of where you're not winning, it might be the difference between bogeying or birdieing and ma making the cut or not. I, I don't know if that has much to play in it, but I would imagine it ha it plays a little some bit some of these mentally. guys, it definitely does, for sure. Some of the, like on the line guys for making the playoffs, some of the guys that are on the kind of top 120, 100 lines. It does. And 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 not only is it the money, it's that it's the um it's the exemptions yeah. for the rest of the year. Ooh. So it's um, you know, you're not you don't feel like your back's against the wall as much. Yeah. And you can you can, you know, spend a you can take a week off to hone your game. And you don't need to play six weeks in a row, seven weeks in a row. It gives you a little bit more freedom to show up to bigger events more rested and more prepared instead of showing up to a big event elevated event three you know three weeks on the road and credibility so, from the other things. golfers on the tour like hey this guy belongs here he's he's won it and now once you win a major i mean that's yeah changes everything think for about sure it. think about it just from like i i always think and now we've, we're sponsoring some caddies which is awesome and we want to keep getting more if you don't think john ellis is on the radar <laughs> although Yesterday's price is not today's price. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Um, but think about it from like I always think about the caddies and like their like their income too. Like a lot of these oh. caddies struggle. They 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 don't get great accommodations. When you think about John Ellis, what do you think Wyndham Clark just won? What came in first? Like three five? No, I think it's like two and change. <sighs> two something. Two two four two something. Still nice. So um, you know, and then you know. It, <laughs> You'd rather win a major anywhere else than California. That's another thing. They get is. banged now taxes. That's insane. But it's all, it's, all, it's, all, it's all good. I mean, like, in this context, when you're talking about 10% for, for John, I mean, yeah. it's, it's a, you know, he's, you know, he's got that Austin Kaiser lifestyle now. Um, <laughs> or, or moving that way. It's just, you know, he's going to get, they're going to get a little bit more everything. Everything, every door opens up when you win a major as far as, the, co the companies and sponsorships that you work with, the, the, the corporate, you know, engagements that you're going to have. It's just, it really opens up a whole new world for these guys. And, 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 they're, and they're the best. I mean, they really are. I've hung out with, with John a couple times oh, in Jacksonville. Oh, and um, and uh, he, he's a good dude, man. Clark, Bob to sports. I, yeah. I got a picture of us outside of Rayo's the other night. Yeah. The only thing is... My forehead's never looked bigger you still in the post picture. It. You should be like, I want to, but you got to see this forehead. I saw it. You, you look you, fine. You saw that? It's okay. Oh, this thing is a. I got a massive. It's a good forehead, photo, Bob. I think it's yeah. worth posting. Uh, it's the dinner before the major U.S. Open winner. Wish that I could, could tell be you the it difference. Like an illusion. By the way, he's wearing a could be the difference hat in sure the is. photo. Sure, bro. If we, <laughs> so you know, I mean, foreheads right aside, Bob. Rayo's, I think Rayo's dinner could be the difference. Rayo's dinner might be the new tone, like the precedent moving forward. You know what I felt terrible about though? Um, it still sits with me, as crazy as this may seem. He asked me what I should get. I said, you know, you could get the pasta and whatnot. 
the pasta dish they gave him was was so much. It was it was smaller than what it normally is. Yeah, I got the same thing. Smaller than like what I got last got night. Pasta, um, like a side no, dish. No, on. yours was the right. Yours was the okay. right size last night. It was just smaller, and it was his first Rayo's experience, so we loved the appetizers and all of that. But he finished the pasta. And then I saw him go to the bread basket after the it's pasta. Tough. Yeah, it's tough. And I felt terrible because you don't ever want to see. There's nothing worse than still being hungry. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry. Well, that, I, I, that's I, what's I, on Bob's Yeah, yeah no, I know. I got a little sidetracked. Yeah, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm glad you can get that. I'm glad you <laughs> can get that off. With all the things that are going on, yeah, that's what yeah. Bob's worried about, the size of the pasta yeah. that he got it right. Apparently, it didn't ruin his week. Yeah, apparently, yeah. it so, was that's okay. good news. Maybe it was just the right size. Yeah. Now, <laughs> on the, the other the the other end of things, Rory, who again I I had bet him that would have been huge. He had every single chance to run away with that thing, and he just couldn't make a putt. I mean, look, no, it's hard out there, but it's like he just couldn't get a putt to go. He wasn't. It's, it's the story of his career since he basically last won a major is that his putter is just not matching his ball striking. I mean, if you think back to the British Open last year when Cam Smith won and they kind of went head-to-head in the final round, Cam Smith made all the putts, and Rory just never made a putt. Like, the whole day, he's just giving him birdie chances, just not making putts. So, I mean, he knows it. It's it's not a secret that um, his putter is just not – you know, he didn't need to even make a lot of putts today. A few. He just needed yeah, to make that, yeah. one to get into a playoff. And it, he, he, he had like I think he had one one putt six today. Six-foot putt for birdie, and he missed that. Yeah. And I was like, this you is know, tough. You know, but gonna, he also wasn't like um, – there wasn't too many scenarios where he was like really tight off his approach shots. He was kind of playing center of the green a lot of times, which like to, at least for the back nine, which – like a lot of the putts were longer and they were like lag putts, but he was almost playing like he had the lead. He wasn't like really well. Wyndham was attacking more than Rory, sure. I would say. I mean, other than Fleetwood today, no one was really sticking it. Yeah, like the pins were not set up. I think especially after the first round. Yeah, the view, you know, you could see how much more tucked the pins got every day. And you know, the further the week goes, it's going to get firmer. So you didn't. It's not like we saw a lot of no shots that were. I mean, Wyndham had one on a par three early that he kind of worked back to the hole that was tight. Other than that, you didn't see a lot of like inside ten feet birdie looks for any of these guys. Yeah, so that's fair. you know, Roy's just you gotta, you just you gotta make, you gotta make putts inside. You know, from fifteen to thirty feet, you need to make one or two of those around in these in these majors to get. You kind of get you up into that that mix. Even just to put pressure on Wyndham, yeah. I feel like. I mean, look, he finished one back, so it's he just needed to make one. Yeah, he just it's, couldn't. It's true. Yeah, and the the one that you said that was like a little like four footer or something that he missed was a killer. But yeah, he really did. He just needed one. Another thing too, just from a viewer's perspective, it does kind of suck when you just when it's a two man race by yeah. like the twelfth, thirteenth hole. Like it's so much better when you have other guys. Yeah. into the mix it just makes it so much more fun um i guess what you got to do now is start betting top 10 finishes instead of you know winner bet winner bets are crazy winner bets I mean, they really are they're so hard to hit i can't tell you the last time i hit a golf bet they're the hardest yeah, to hit. that's just, why they pay out so much that's why you, which you matchups if you really want big money which you should do is the pre-tournament like what we do on our our, our draft kings parlays yeah. is do top 10 top 20 top like if you get like two or three of them that are all like top finishers and like things that you feel you can kind of like monitor. So the guy's out of the mix, but you got him top 30. Like it's got you kind yeah. of still paying attention. Those are to the so leaderboard. hard to hit. But I will say though, a lot of the bets and I always bust jets balls for, for not being able to hit a golf pick. The picks that we're taking are on Sunday on the final pairing and we can't, we can't get one to go. It's hard. It's hard, <laughs> it's hard dude. I don't think many people had uh had Wyndham to win this week, so Vegas was very happy with this outcome. I think if that if Rory wins this event, yeah, it's a it's a bang job for Vegas, um, for sure. Versus versus Wyndham pulling it out, so Look. they're they're celebrating in the in the depths of casinos in Vegas yeah, somewhere as they normally do. Yeah, I think. But if you looked at that like like the leaderboard going into today, I I felt at least myself I felt Ricky wasn't gonna win. 
for I just didn't feel like he was gonna he was gonna do. I, although I love Ricky, I was pulling for him. I didn't get the feeling. Wyndham, I thought because he didn't have the experience, I didn't think he would do. It. I would have said the odds on favorite would have been Rory or Scheffler, even Scheffler, with yeah. three back with how good he's played. And let's let's be honest, Scheffler like the first five six holes probably missed birdie putts by collective few inches yeah, yeah. all together like he which could have been, easily yeah. been right there which was him all week yeah he couldn't get the putter going like he normally does he was if he had so like close. if he had like even for him what's like a slightly above average putting week this week scheffler would have won by yes. four like he, he's just he, amazing though how he's in every single player, tournament guys, top five guys. top three i mean i was saying to bob earlier like if you were just smart just but top 10 finish every tournament he's in yeah. he's just dialed he's, he's playing the hottest the golfer golf in the world man yeah he's hitting the ball better than anyone right now you gotta be feeling good when you're doing that man it's when nice. it's just like even when you don't win you're coming what was he third this tournament fourth i think it was fourth after after ricky i think fourth or top t fifth i don't know yeah i mean that. but still like i mean that's gotta pay out real good too these guys gotta be so like even if you finish fifth seventh like whatever these guys gotta be so relieved when they get into the clubhouse and it's all done to where like it's such a grind out there that by the time they get in they gotta just be so relieved to be in i, I stress out for them well, I mean, usually that's what u.s opens are all about they don't get a caesar wrap at the turn number up and being done yeah like, oh, a lot of these man. tournaments you kind of like run out of holes, like you get going and you run out of holes. And if you're leader in the clubhouse, but the leaders, the guy that's tied with you's got four holes left, like he's going to birdie one of the last four. Like he's going to, you got birdies left, right? That's how most tour events are with the U S open. It's like, just get me into the clubhouse, post a number and let's just make these guys have to make bars. Um, this one's a little different. Um, Even Wyndham, Wyndham's got to be, and he won. He's gonna enjoy. He's got to be so mentally gassed. You oh my need two god! Days to oh, I guess the first day you're gonna party your brains out. Oh, okay. I think tonight's and gonna be a fun. Tonight night, right? they'll party like crazy, and Perez already con- contemplated being at that party. I've have been. I've not, <laughs> I have not been invited at all. The you're always contemplated invited. my interest. If I were to be invited, I I, I think you'd get the invite, FP. The fu- I'm so sick. I should. <laughs> you should. You really <laughs> should, especially with tomorrow. We need you tomorrow. But let me tell I you haven't something. Had an, I haven't had an ounce of alcohol since I've been here. Because I've been here amazing. since Tuesday. Big Wave Dave is coming. He's he's driving from Newport to go meet the guys because he's very close with John Ellis. He's very close with Wyndham Clark. To where I'm not saying we're going to be invited. Is there a chance? Yes, and I just know if that phone call does. That's gonna, <laughs> I'll have I'll have no issue saying no. You know I'm going to bed. That's gonna be a problem. Um, the yeah. funniest thing about that Perez video of him next to Wyndham Clark after he won at the celebratory dinner, it was on a weekend where Perez was everywhere in yeah. Scottsdale. My phone, I had so many DMs or even just like of our friends. Like I saw Perez here. Like I saw Perez there. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? It was with Johnny Menzel. Oh, I, I called him one morning and I hear dogs barking. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck are you? But then you see Wyndham's story and he's like giving this big like thank you and like he he's making a speech and you just see Perez just with his drink Blast. next to him. <laughs> I'm the closest person to him and I realized he started talking and I like you I looked at the, the cameras and I like realized where I was and I like slowly yeah like, you backed out yeah, like that Simpsons like Homer into the bush yeah. meme <laughs> like I'm just that gif where I'm yeah. just like I'm just trying to get out of frame. Like I have, I just met the guy seven minutes ago. I do not need to be standing in front of him. Like I've been in his entourage since since the web.com like tour. His best man. Yeah, yeah. So I've been rolling with him FD's since. He's right there to give him yeah. the corsage. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was at my parents' place. I was in Jupiter when I saw that video, and I just remember just cracking the fucking joint. Just no business being there. <laughs> just no. absolutely not. No. Much. I mean, I, look, I wanted to meet the guy. I was happy for him, <sighs> but I had no business standing where I was standing <laughs> at that moment. Yeah, you were the only other person in the frame. Man, we were saying. Oh. Uh, <laughs> We were saying today that that like he's a he's a Scottsdale guy where where he lives. That Scottsdale crew, they run deep, man. It, it's it's, it's, bro- it's a brotherhood. It really in is. It dude. really is. You got, you got Homa. Skis, you got Riggs. You got that boy. You got that boy. Skis. Manziel. Skis. Manziel. Skis. Cole. Cole. Yeah, um, you got Riggs is now out Cole there. Nost Riggs is in there. there. Nost for sure. Um, 
Homa, obviously. Tony Finau's a, a, a guy. Joel Damon's, Joel Damon's a Damon, big yeah. one. Oh, oh, yeah, we said Homa, too. Homa's out there. Um, Everyone. If you live out there and you play golf, uh, you're like a John part Rahm of this is group. out there, too. Out yeah. there. JJ Watts, Finau. Yeah. Yeah. There's a Fina. big crew out there. But then there. there's like the, the party crew, like the crew yeah. that gets after it. <laughs> That's the, the skis, the. Uh, Sleaze. No, well, Sleaz, but Skis, too. Skis is out there a lot, but he lives in Nashville. Oh, does oh, he? Really? Yeah, I thought he was a Nashville. Scottsdale. By the way, no, shout out. He's just there all the time. The, Skis is like the if you know, you know guy. It, it's the and his music bangs, dude. I've been playing he this is, stuff a lot. He is have. the homie song. Good yeah. for this you. One for the homies. He's one of the like really know me. Oh, we won't get, it's we won't. such a smash. He's one of the like most fun, the best. positive guys you could ever be around. Like you're around, like you're around him, and he's just like. He's in a good mood. He's happy. He makes you happy. Like it's just fun being around that guy. He had. He's the funniest guy too. He has the. Um, I love that he's a Nebraska Horn uh, Cornhusker yeah. fan. Big Nebraska guy. <laughs> we saw him at Riviera. Me and Jed have always like loved skis, and he came out of a porter potty and he came to say hello to me. And it was the first time I met him, and I saw him. I fanboyed the fuck out. How did you know who he was initially? Like, how did you get onto him? G- um, Mike. Through, through Mike, Mike Stud. Mike. Yeah, and the music just, it just bangs. And it's like Post Malone. It's good, yeah. He, it's good he, stuff. Uh, he said hello, and I, Jet, Jet was in the porta potty, and Jet came out. I was like, Jet! I was like, it's skis! <laughs> <laughs> and we do, uh, I totally fanboyed. Yeah, he's the man, the Scottsdale crew. They really do. They run deep. I played nine holes. I met them on the back. Him and Manziel met them on the back nine at Mountain Shadows Par Three Course in Scottsdale. It was just, it was just the chillest shit in the world. Look at you guys wrapping no up. No shoes. They were wearing like there. They were yeah. playing in sandals. Like just had some beers. Like just fucking it listening to like music, chilling. Like Manziel's just like we're just all rooting each other on. Like birdies and stuff. Skis like stick one, make a birdie. We're like fucking, let's go. And we just like sat and had a couple drinks and I saw one of your stories. It was great. It wasn't even a long story, like it was like a quick fifteen second story, but you could just tell the vibes were there. Oh yeah, she had some tunes going. Yeah. It was there was no one out there. It was just fucking chill. Yeah. Scottsdale bangs, man. I just shot eighty one as good good championship. <laughs> you know. I fucking dude. I'm gonna get I'm gonna just, I'm gonna address go, it right now. Go, go. Because I'm tired of seeing stuff about it. Go. <clears throat> Garrett asked me to play in it. And I had no idea what it was. It told me what it was. I had time. So I was like, yeah, I'll come play in it. That sounds great. Um, as it got closer and has, I had not put any work into practicing, I started to realize that this was probably a lose-lose situation for me. Like, if I go, I'm never going to finish in the top 12 of those 63 legitimate aspiring pros. And so even if I shoot a, what's a great score for me, I'm not going to make the top 12, which is true. If I had shot... Two under, I wouldn't have made it, which is a great round for me. And then if I play poorly, like I did, I'm just going to get fucking trolled for it, which I don't care. Like, at the end of the day, I've got enough great golf out on, on the internet and and that that I'm, I'm, I'm good. But, like, everyone's just like, the course is too long for him. You know, he gets on this stuff. If it's not driver wedge, you can't play. It's like, dude, I can play golf. Like, I just didn't play well that day. It doesn't matter. That could have been a 6,300 yard golf course or a 7,300 yard golf course. I didn't play. I did not hit the ball well that day, and I didn't putt well. You also were I wasn't like going to shoot. Back I wasn't going to back trips. Yeah, but that doesn't and matter. Traveling. I mean, that but, yeah, but matter, you played dude. it. I, I just had a cart. It, dude, no. I just played bad golf. Yeah, but and look, I play tournament rounds. Like I can play good golf, like in tournaments. I have no issue with that. It wasn't the situation was too big. Like we, I don't know about anybody else, but I don't play golf on TV as a pro. I wake up some days and, and I don't have it. But you don't. It's and unfortunate you don't, that was the day I didn't play well. You don't try and claim that you do. No, I don't think I ever have. Like, I mean, nah. look, obviously Perez verse is me challenging somebody to come have a match right. against me because I think I can beat somebody when I'm playing well. But guess what? If I don't, which I'm not going to play well every time I play, I'm going to not beat someone, and that's cool. Like, yeah, so it's it wasn't the golf course is too long or like I'm exposed. Like, no, I played bad. How good were these guys too? By the way, yeah, but like. I watched they're it. Great. They're great. Like, they were just aspiring tour pros. Like they're really one guy almost shot fifty nine in the last round. Fifty nine. Really good. They're like way better than me. Like I didn't I didn't like I didn't think I could throw my hat in that ring. 
Like I did it because Garrett asked me and it seemed like a cool thing. And I was like, I want to go do that and see how I kind of stack up to these guys. And it's unfortunate. I played a bad round of golf, but if I had played from the red tees that day, I wasn't going to break par. So, yeah. you know, it is what it is. Yeah. But also too, like, yeah. And you might get like a few comments here and there for the most part. A, our fans is enough to, has seen enough to know your game. And also too, when push comes to shove, they don't give a shit. No, no and I don't that, really care. I just yeah. wanted to say it. No, that's that's the beauty of our fans. I mean, it's like they they don't they don't give. They a saw fuck. you go toe to toe with Keegan for how many holes? Yeah, because Bob and I were basically fucking yeah. non-existent. Yeah. yeah. So, By the way, or how about against Homa? I mean, uh, you were you were uh, lights out. Scotty. I birdied some some of the like the two birdies I made. I birdied, you know, some of the holes I did my best on at the Good Good Championship were some of the longer holes out there. I think also, too, Perez, just, like shit. just watching you play your best golf when you're just vibing and having a good time. Like, yeah. you're probably in a setting there that, you you know. Well, I play with two great guys. I play with Ben um, yeah. and, and Dalkey, both good, good guys. I play with them a lot. They were awesome. Like, those guys are super cool. I hope to link up with them again soon. Um, but tournament golf is just a much yeah, it's slower, different. much more serious – you know, it's just not shooting the shit with the boys. So I don't know. I mean, look, maybe that had something to do with it, but I've played in that. I've played college golf. I've played all these things. It's it's been a long time. So it was kind of like a <clears throat> welcome back to the real world type thing. Would you do it again? Would I go play in the Good Good Championship like again? Next year? Um and like practice for it and see, or is it just I like just, so I didn't I, I guess I didn't walk off that eighteenth green like saying to myself, like, I I miss that atmosphere i miss that like uh arena and i wish i had played better and i desire now to go get myself where i can yeah i don't think i had like i don't think that was as fun to me as like what we do or as like just going on a golf trip with my buddies you know what i mean like i don't have a desire to go work so i can go play more tournament golf anything it reminded me of why I really don't play tournaments anymore. I can't envision um, anything more fun than what we do when we go on our golf trips. It's uh, it's the yeah. best. It's just, I mean, it's just so much fun. Even if I had shot even par, I don't think I would have come out of that and been like that was a f- like a fun like a fun yeah. day. I just don't. I I gave up that a long time ago. Like I don't even play state stuff that much anymore. Like, My thing that just that from not that we're playing in in tournaments, but from what I've seen, like even playing the good good major, which is awesome but like it is it's such a different dynamic when it's like a competitive thing which by the way is good like that's that's great and people want to see stroke play they want to see that my only thing is sometimes or if you do different filming if you play with people that like where it affects their time if they're not playing good like you're probably out there and still having a good time yes the thing that i don't like with competitive golf is if the other person, it's good to get competitive. I love to talk shit back and forth. But if somebody's playing bad and it, it's affecting their time yeah. and they're not fun, but that's the shit that I hate. Yeah, or I agree with blow that. up because I've shouldn't. done that a lot. No, but you're funny about like you're still, it's a good time. It doesn't ruin your day. No. No, no I mean, yeah. I, I think I've accepted it a long fit, but it's time funny. ago that I'm not a good golfer. There's, there's people that I've played with where if you play competitive with them, and then either you're beating them or whatever, like they're they get so frustrated and they're not they're not having a good time. Yeah. And it's like that's the only thing that I don't like. If you have the people where you can play competitive with, you whether you're betting with them or something and it's fun competition, that's great, depending on the, the scenario that, that you're in. Yeah. And at the end of the day, no one really gives a shit what you shot. So nobody you know, my dad told me growing up, be this you know, that was a hothead kid that wanted to play well just like everybody else, but it stuck with me that be the same guy. At, you know, in the grill afterwards, if you shot 85 or 65, no one gives a shit. No one wants to be around you when you're super excited because you played great because they might not have. And no one wants to deal with your sulking bullshit because you shot 85 because yeah. no one fucking cares. It doesn't matter. So I, when I shot 81, you know what I did? I didn't get into an Uber and throw my clubs down and go lock myself in the room at the Airbnb. I went to the bar at the clubhouse with Gipper Fee now. Got banged up, and then I went and played three more extra holes with three dudes that played in it. The one guy that got the hole in one the first round, and then the, one of the um, Sam Murphy's brother. And I went, and, and it, you think I wanted to like? None of part of me was like, I don't want to go play golf. I just shot eighty one. I was like, yeah, I've had some drinks. Let's go out there and hit some balls around. I don't give a shit. Speaking of hole in ones, I I could not feel more like we have one coming. Yeah. I feel it in the air. I mean, and I, I, I mean, I, if I'm being honest, it's going to be FP who hits it. No. But that being said, 
I would love any of us to hit it, but I feel like it's coming. We oh. have been flirting with multiple videos now, almost hitting it. And God, is it not going to be just absolutely unbelievable when, if, and when it does happen, I feel like I mean, it's, 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 it's just hanging there. I feel like we just, it's like Rory today. Couldn't make, you know, couldn't get yeah. that one. It's like right there and he couldn't get it. Me and Prez. Hopefully we can get that hole in one, man. I swear though, to God. Like, yeah, it probably would end up being Prez and I'll, I'll take a hole in one anyway we can get it. It'd be so much fucking funnier oh. if it was me or you. Imagine it, if it was 100%. Jet. 100%. Oh. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> oh. Dude, you, and by the way, he has one, which you and I don't. Amazing. If I had to sign, one. if I was offered a deal with the devil right now and he said, if you sign this piece of paper, you will never have a hole in one on the Bob Does Sports channel. Not that I never will. Yeah. Uh, but I'll never have one on the channel. Yeah. But I guarantee that within the first 12 months and then the next 12 months, Bob and Joe will have hole in ones on the channel. I'm signing that quick as shit. Because I it's, I think it's, we would just it's, go, well, I think we yeah. Would go it just would be, it's going to be so great. It's that it's that like we, forbidden fruit for golfers like you. I think it's, imagine, it's like it's like the holy grail. Oh god. And imagine like if it's mid video, do we just cut the video? Do we just stop? Like mid video. It's gonna get hammered it's gonna in the get video. Saucy. Would get, it's gonna get yeah, saucy. Whoever whoever hits it. It has what, to be wild. We gotta get fucking wrecked. It's gotta and You get, know what's fucked up too? What's fucked up is we're not we're not gonna be we're not gonna save it. Like you're no. not like you're gonna know on Instagram the day it happens. I can't help. You know I what I mean? Have to like we're not job. we're not gonna like hold on to it for Shit. the video to come out like we should like as good YouTubers. You post it. We just uh, we don't have like Jet, Jet would have an, a huge. You'd be so upset with us. With have what are we gonna do? I can't. I wouldn't be able to hold it. We'd have You'd to. have to hold it for the video's sake. I don't think we could. Bro. You think this guy could hold on to I that? I could hold I mine. You think, but you think him no, he's... when us going out and celebrating and all of what will right, happen, let's hope that will actually happen that night won't be documented. Or he, you know, what he, what he, what would be a compromise would be that you did document it, but you didn't post it. Yes, you capture the whole evening, but you don't put it on. You wait till the video until. comes out before you. But post even it. I just don't see how we could do that. I don't. I don't, I don't think we video, have that in us. No, you got to think of how the video would do. Oh, for it would sure. do ten times no. better if you don't put it out. I think what would end up happening We're talking is if we've already hit this. We, is, by the way, yeah, we have not is, hit a hole in one. This is this is horrible this karma, whole, by the way. Oh, this is terrible karma. <laughs> the, or maybe it's what Wyndham did today, no. and he played. Are we manifesting it right now? You got to manifest well, it, Bob. But you know the thing that does kind of suck is like. <laughs> I remember even asking Micah. Maybe you asked Micah Morris when when you were playing, like, how many hole-in-ones did you have, and he didn't have one. That deflates me because it's like he's such a good golfer. He's been playing oh, for geez. so long, and he still I doesn't have Brent one. Like Wood the other day with Marchese. It's luck. He's a plus five. He's aspiring to get his tour card. I'm like, so how many do you have? He's like, I don't have one. Yeah, but it's it, luck. It, I'm like, it's, how it's can luck, you? And he's time, putting like, darts. You got these guys consistent. that are throwing consistent sure. darts. Where their like, their percentage is to, their chances are higher. For sure. But for it to actually go in versus being an inch around the cup. Or like within every point within one foot radius of you know how many like yeah. there's infinite oh, many oh. many points within a one foot diameter of of a hole that a ball you can have end up three. in which is a great shot for it to actually also, go in the hole is just speed. sometimes luck of the like draw it knocks off it's oh yeah like, you can hit it like, like I had that one on on Grant's channel recently yeah. in oh, Richmond shit. where my shit's going straight been, at it. That would have been so devastating. Nah, I mean, I, mean, I would have been thrilled for you, but, but we that, wanted to come on the channel. First. I've had three. Only one I actually saw go in the hole. The first one, I didn't see it go in. The second one, I didn't see it go oh, in. Oh, really? The first one, I didn't see it go in and no one was up there, so I'm looking for my ball. I'm like, what the fuck? And then I'm like, my, my brother-in-law now uh, walks by and he goes, fuck you. I was like, what? He's like, it's in the hole. I was like, holy shit, it's in the hole. And that was like 2015. Oh. I had been playing golf at that point for for 20 years. You got a long way, Joey. It's hard. No, no, don't say that. Manifest yeah. good, good, yeah. good vibration. The group in front of me saw the second one. Oh. So I hit it. I was playing kind of shitty. We had, it was the second glass hole. I just hit this flush shot right at it. Perfect shot. And I just like, I hit it. It's in the air. I start walking the cart. I get in the cart. And because I'm like in the cart, I don't hear these guys or I'm not even looking. And I like finally look up and these guys are freaking out up ahead. So I was Could like, you imagine to you, Bob. And then we hopped out and they were like, your fucking ball went in the fucking hole. It would be oh. all over the internet. It uh, would be, be awesome. I mean, look, it, it would be, be so sick. Yeah. It'd be, you know, it'd be messed up as if it happens 
off camera. Oh. With, with us together off camera. Yeah. So funny for brutal. me. I mean, yeah, that's a part three. It just, I almost, it almost is like now you say like whenever we play part threes, you have to film it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, just just the <laughs> rush. Even Unless it's like a 230-yard par three. Well, yeah. One of the ultimate highs is if you flush a ball on a par three and this thing looks like it's going at the flag and you have your boys behind you, like when you guys are hyping behind, up, hyping, hyping. It, that's the ultimate high yeah. right there of the thought of thinking that you might Last have. time I was with Josh when I said, and you're like, this is, this is going. And you Getting actually call bed. it, same thing with Perez when he almost hit it in Virginia. You call it. You're like, this is going. And as you're saying that, you're seeing the ball go right next to the pin, and you're like, oh, my God. The if best. this goes in right now. That is the ultimate <sighs> endorphin rush of all time is yeah. watching that thing go. Or I was playing at um, – I was playing that Encino with Showtime, ah. and I hit a ball, and the pin was tucked back, and it looked like it went right at this thing, and we couldn't see it. Just the drive yeah. up, yeah, and it ended up the being anticipation so long, um, <laughs> so long. Yeah, just the anticipation and and driving up is the ultimate rush. But again, if it happens on the channel, oh, all of us once you get game. one, two, I feel like then you. You've got it off your chest. Then it's like, okay, you're, I, um, you're playing with house money. I w- a few years ago, I went up to Wisconsin to meet up with my buddies who um, were going for some work conference, and they just play golf. And I was like, right, I'm going to crash in your hotel room floor or whatever. So I meet him. Um, my flight gets in a little later, and I get to this golf course where they've already played. I meet him on, like, 12. My buddy had gotten a hole-in-one on, like, the third hole of that round. And I think the hole before, he made a nine – and he's a decent golfer. I think he's like a seven. And he shot like a 112, but he had a one. So, and, and that was a morning round. And we left there and we had the last tee time at Whistling Straits that afternoon that was guaranteed to finish 18. So we go straight after he makes a hole in one, shooting 112 to straights. And they're just banged up already, and we're keeping the ball rolling, getting banged up. Everything's on him. Like we're playing straights in like the best mood ever. Like, Imagine like celebrating someone's hole in one plane, like, oh. and you do it cele- like playing whistling straight. It was one, a that's vibe. Cool. I want to shoot like a one twenty. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> you know you want to frame the card and have the ball. It'd be the and it's like it's just ridiculous. Like it was like I think he went seven nine one eight or something. <laughs> where like his amazing. first four holes or that something. Don't even matter at that which point. is terrible even for him. The worst. My biggest fear is is because a lot of times when I'm on my parents' course, just when I take the card and just go out. My worst fear of all time is it happening if I'm by yourself. Oh. No, the worst fear of all time is doing it on uh like I happened close to me in in Vancouver last time. I had a par three with my uncle and I I shot into the water. So then you re tee it and I came within an inch of going oh, in. Oh yeah. So it's like it doesn't even count because it's a re tee. Yeah. It would be for par. That, and you're like, dude, if this was just like uh, that, that to me is the scary because you have to. You can't take a mulligan more uh, than one. My dad, my buddy's dad at Augusta, played Augusta. His boss was a member. Played Augusta. He gets a hole in one on 12. Oh. And then puts one in the water on 16, re-tees for three on 16 and puts it in. Are you serious? Oh, my God. Same round. get a hole in one on Amen Corner, it's got to be. Unbelievable. Yeah. Make a hole in one on 12 at Augusta is like. uh, like One in a million. You think of like. Seven at Pebble, you think a twelve at Augusta. Those are the getting into those Augusta are the though. two. Well, sure to even get there, to even get to Augusta. Yeah, he, Please. you know, he, you know, I, I think his 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 late boss, I th- you know, it's, I think it's been some time since he's been there, but I think he played it probably a couple dozen times. It's oh wow! Happen, but to to have that like oh afternoon is unreal. You got a hole in one. Somebody Augusta, or even Pebble, like you said. Look, I don't even care. Obviously, it'd be the best if it was one of us. I don't care if somebody even comes on our channel and just doesn't. Yeah, to, I even have just one. Wanna see one, even just to see one. You've never been, you've never no. even seen one. Neither of you have ever no. even been with someone that got no, one. I've never seen it. Wow. I've, I've had a, call, a bunch of close encounters, but I've it's never almost seen as good. It. Yeah, I do. I almost would, as good because you drink on them. I the closest I've out. ever gotten was in Whistler, which is a course we're going to be playing when we go to Canada. Oh. And I'll tell you the course. It's Nicholas North. It's Jack Nicholas designed a whole 10, and it's over a little pond. And it was one of the flush – and I am i don't hit flush shots. I hit a flush 7-iron and went straight you, – it was like the feeling watching, like you said, a ball so flush and straight up, and it came right at the pin and almost like dunked, but it – 
hit the pin and rolled off the whole green yeah. and I had a bogue in the hole. It was the worst feeling from Hitting like the, the, the worst. highest of highs to like, I'm not even a part of this. It'll, hole. it'll, it'll happen. Somebody's oh, going to get a one God. point. Something crazy um, <laughs> is going to happen, but yeah, we got the Canada trip coming. So you'll have redemption there. Um, good little, good little U S open recap there. Um, again, hopefully we can get this out pretty fast. Um, just to talk about it and whatnot. A lot to be excited about. Big one tomorrow for the boys. Um, Ticket and the Jet will be back next time. Jet's getting hammered at oh, a wedding yeah. right now. I, I, I'm oh, so upset that I'm not seeing that right now. Yeah. Him getting sauced up at a wedding is like some... That's Dude, a Jet that you we can, might never see. No. Right? Oh. You, yeah, well, not, you know we, what, though? One of you two, you know... Jet's oops. been bringing it lately. He has, but put a, put a wedding, wedding oh, jet. Oh, wedding jet. Oh, yeah. yeah. When are we going to see a wedding jet? That's a different jet, man. Um, yeah. Much, much more to come. Uh, folks, we appreciate you. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Um, Nikki Juice, welcome to the program there. That it has done it. Another edition of the Bob Does Sports Podcast. U.S. Open Recap. We'll see you next time.